It seems today that all we see is violence in movies and sex on TV. But those good old fashioned values of yesteryear that some long for would land the king of rock and roll in hot water. Today, I want to tell you a story of censorship, one that seems quite strange by the standards we hold these days, and it'll take us back to the 1950s. But to really understand how Elvis would catch this type of controversy, we need to go over how we broke onto the scene. Elvis Presley was born poor. He would start working as soon as possible to help support his mother and father, eventually landing a job as a truck driver for $40 a week. Not long after, fate would step in when Elvis recorded a couple of songs at Sun Records. Sam Phillips, founder of Sun Records and Sun Studio in Memphis, Tennessee, would produce Elvis after various events that aren't too important to this story, and we all know what happened from there. The type of fame Presley would garner is kind of hard to understand. We all know what being famous is. Some people watching this may even have fame to their name and know firsthand, but very few people have ever been as famous as Elvis. Not before, not since. After touring the South, Elvis couldn't leave any building without a team of police officers to protect him from fans and jealous haters alike. Swarms of teens mobbing towards him at every opportunity. This brought critics as well. Overall, the older generation was unimpressed with Elvis. His type of hillbilly rock didn't appeal to music gatekeepers at the time, and it was simply written off as hooligan music. More controversial than his music was Elvis's habit of gyrating on stage. Acts like Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, and Buddy Holly would all have a very stand-up show. Not motionless, but the performance was more about the music than the things that they were doing on stage. This was something Elvis couldn't do in his younger years, and his hips would sell records, but they would also lead to his most significant backlash up to this point. So the year is 1956, and the Ed Sullivan show is the biggest in town. The problem for Elvis? Sullivan wanted nothing to do with him, going as far as to state that he would never have Elvis Presley on a show because of how obscene his stage performance was. After Presley's appearance on the Steve Allen show, Ed Sullivan would change his mind. This was due to the overwhelming numbers Elvis brought in. The ratings spoke for themselves, and Ed would have to negotiate with Elvis's manager, Colonel Parker, which would lead to the highest fee ever paid to an act at $16,000 per show. Things were a bit off with his first spot on the show, though. Sullivan had been in a car accident and would not be attending. Not only that, Elvis played in front of an audience, but not New York where the show was produced. Instead, he would play from a CBS studio in LA due to being in the middle of filming the movie Love Me Tinder. The 21-year-old Presley was humbled to be on the show and said it was the greatest honor he had had in his life. He would go on to play three songs for the show, and the set included Hound Dog, which would be the tune that would get him in trouble a few months down the line when he would appear on the Milton Berle show. During Elvis' performance of this classic song, he would extend it with two slowed down verses. During this part of the performance, Presley began gyrating and simulating sex movements in a very intentional way. You ain't not tomorrow. By today's standards, this is a funny moment that would not make any headlines at all. But in the 1950s, this caused a national controversy. The media would dub Presley Elvis the Pelvis, and Steve Allen would threaten to cancel the upcoming shows unless he toned down his act. This led to Steve Allen introducing the new Elvis Presley, with Elvis appearing in a tuxedo to make things right with the older generation. However, the damage had already been done, as a judge in Florida promised Elvis jail time if he performed obscenely in the state. With all of these precautions in place, Sullivan would still feel the need to censor Elvis on his last performance for the show, as during his second show, Elvis was shown head to toe, and though they didn't focus on his hips, the Ed Sullivan show would receive 70,000 letters of complaints about the singer. This led to showing him from the waist up during the last performance. With Elvis singing, When My Blue Moon Turns to Gold Again, shots were restricted to the middle of his chest upwards. A straight close-up during most of the song with some profile side shots for Spice. The censorship did nothing to change Elvis's public image as many women's groups dubbed him vulgar, suggestive, and disgusting. And though Presley's drummer would say years later that it was a publicity stunt by Sullivan, Ed himself went on record saying it was to compromise and keep the young fans happy. It's strange to look back and think about how much trouble one pelvis caused, but it's an interesting story regardless, a story that I wanted to share with you. Thank you for checking out my video about Elvis the pelvis, and if you want to see more cool videos, make sure to subscribe and leave a like if you enjoyed it. I want to thank my patrons and YouTube channel members, but a special thanks to my biggest supporters. Zeroster, JP Rivera, Fireflare, Ruben Atwood, Legendary Angel 94, Urk the Urk, Phil Starsick, Hatched Bread Gaming, Alexander Cobb, Papa Swanson, Billy Joe Jim Bob, Bill Scott Sheets, Edgy, and Primark Mustard. I couldn't do this without you guys. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. It has been Mantis. Uh, I gotta testify. Come on.
up in the spot looking extra fly. For the day you die, you gon' trust the sky. You gon' trust the sky, baby girl, testify. Come up in the spot looking extra fly. For the day you die, you gon' trust the sky.